Hey, it's Allie Edwards and I'm back again today with a follow-up for from last week's video where we talked about printing at home. In today's video, I just wanna show you real quick how I print on vellum. It was a request from one of the comments uh, last week and I've got a couple different brands of vellum here. So we're gonna try both of them and play around with the settings a little bit on the Epson 15,000 printer and I'll share those with you. The uh, transparent or the vellum that I'm going to print on when you get vellum to print on you want to make sure that it's inkjet vellum so the the type of paper that you use needs to match the kind of printer that you're using so this one the first one is a uh, Swarthmore uh, inkjet translucent vellum that's one of the ones that I use and then the other one I have here is a package that is from graphics and it's graphics vellum doesn't have a real specific packaging on it, but we'll try both of those just so you can see what they look like. And then I also figured that while we, while we were here, uh, we could do something on a transparency too. So this also is from Graphics and it is uh, clear film for inkjet, so clear like a transparency. So what I have done is I have a page in my album that is a full page photo of one of our cats and I created a page. Um, I did it in Illustrator, you could do it in Photoshop, like wherever you wanted to, to create whatever you wanted to print on there. Um, I'm gonna be printing from Illustrator to my printer with the test uh, being on the vellum first. Okay, here's the page that I want to print. I set this up in Illustrator. I've got a little bit of custom word art. I've got journaling and I have a box here that designates the outside of the page protector. So seven inches by 8.25 inches. And then I'm going to go ahead and print this. And what I've learned over doing some tests here in the house is that what seems to work best with the vellum that I'm using right now, which is the graphics vellum, I actually ended up only had one. I only had one sheet of the Swarthmore. Um, so I, was, I, I did one and it was not good. So I was <laughs> testing it on there. But it wasn't, I don't think it's necessarily that the paper's not good. I think I didn't have the settings right. So what is working though is when you go into setup, and click continue. And so your boxes might look a little bit different depending on your computer, but I've got the XP 15,000 selected. Um, under media and quality, I did the rear tray because I think that it, the paper seems to get grabbed easier from there. I did an auto select on the media type. I previously had tested a bunch of different ones and was having trouble finding the right one. I did auto select and normal and then hit print. And what came out was the best of all of them. And I think sometimes what happens if you think that you, you know, if you, if if you put in glossy as a as the media type, then it's putting too much ink onto the vellum. Okay, so here's what it looks like coming out of the printer. Again, this is the graphics vellum. Looks great, not smudging, not excess um, ink on there, okay? And what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna cut this out and then it can be layered right on top of this photo of Ernie. So again, this is the graphics vellum and I'll link that for you guys below using just the um, auto paper selection on the XP 15,000 and from the rear tray that seemed to work really well. All right, so next I wanna do a test print on the inkjet transparency. This again is from graphics. Inkjet transparencies usually have a coated side where it feels rougher to the touch. And that's actually the side that you wanna print on because you want the ink to be able to sit on there. So I've got the um, that side up here in my printer and I'm gonna head over to the computer and figure out what settings to use. Okay, next I'm gonna do a test print on the inkjet transparency and I'm gonna do that uh, that's the graphics inkjet transparency. I'm just going to leave the settings the same and let's see what happens. Uh, rear tray, auto selecting the media type and just clicking normal. I think when we, anytime we hit best on this is, is when it ends up adding more ink. And for these specialty kinds of papers, at least the slick ones like a transparency or a vellum, it doesn't seem to work uh, as well. Okay, here's a look at the transparency that just came out. Let's actually, we'll bring it over here and I'll get some white paper. Um, it's definitely, actually let's just turn one of these over. It's definitely a little bit wet and so, and this is just using the exact same settings that I did on the vellum, which was the auto, auto paper and uh, rear feed. The text looks awesome. The Ernie part is a little bit wet, but I'm pretty sure that if I leave it out here to dry, it will uh, be just fine. So it's 
pretty pretty simple, pretty easy to be able to print on different kinds of papers. And I'm actually really glad that I have done this video because now I'll be able to remember which settings seem to work best on uh, that particular printer. Okay, and then I just wanted to show you guys real quick how I would add this into the album. Again, I have both of the pages that I printed out here and showed you the settings for. Again, one of them is the graphics inkjet vellum and the other one is the graphics clear film for inkjet and I'll link both of you guys, both of those for you uh, below. You know, which one you decide to use kind of depends on the look that you want, right? The, this one's gonna be super clear. This one you have more of the, um, the vellum, obviously the vellum look to it. But again, I set up these lines for myself so I could make it real easy to simply cut this out and then I'm gonna punch holes in it and add it into the album. So it becomes a page on its own paired with the uh, photo of Ernie there too. So let's get this guy all cut out. And it doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. The other thing that I would, I wish I would have added on there right now was a date, but I can do that in another way. So this could be a full page, you could cut it down, lots of different options. I'm just gonna be adding it right on top there, essentially just like this. And obviously I made that yellow, the top part yellow, but you can play around with that in your editing program or your, whether you're using Photoshop or, or Illustrator, if that's something that you use. And now this is something that you could, obviously you could add um, additional you know, embellishments on there if you wanted to. I think I'm just gonna keep it like this. I may add something on the back here. I don't know, maybe I'll look around. I've got some of the stuff from the, from the awesome story kit. Maybe I'll look and see if I have something funny that I could add there onto that. All right, so as you can see, I did decide, I decided to add a little something onto this page. It's a great opportunity to use some of the things from my stash here. So I just went into my circle stash and pulled out a bunch of circles. And I've done something like this before where it goes across um, the bottom of the page. I always like that, the opportunity to do that kind of thing. Uh, so I gotta find my adhesive and we'll get some of these stuck down on here. Right, and the last thing that I added on here was the date. I definitely wanted to make sure that I added that on there. I just grabbed my rolling date stamp and some stays on and went ahead and stamped the date up above the title on the vellum. So if you're stamping on vellum, you definitely want to use a permanent ink like stays on. Uh, that is one that will not... Uh, get smeared around all over the place on there. All right, I hope this video was helpful and gives you some tips for printing on vellum and transparency. Let me know if you guys have questions in the comments below and we'll see you back here next week.